Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehra Bagga and today I'll be taking you through one of the interesting chess games and that was played uh, in 2018 during the Tata Steel Chess Championship. Now this was uh, between Vishwanathan Anand, the five-time world chess champion, India's first grandmaster against Hikaru Nakamura, who also happens to be uh, uh, America's first grandmaster. Now Hikaru has been gaining a lot of popularity these days thanks to his blitz uh, that he plays and also the live streaming that he does. Uh, and he's the grandmaster known for his expressions as well as his game is. So yeah, you can expect a lot of fun with him around always. And his birthday happens to be on 9th of December. And also since Vishy Anand's birthday is on 11th of December, we have been trying to pay some tribute to him by covering up his top matches. Now, this one comes up for both of them. So, here is Chess Yard and me wishing both of them a very happy birthday in advance. So, yeah, let's begin with the game. Uh, just before starting, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. Let's start off with the game and see how it went. Uh, here, Anand was playing as white. He started off with E4 and E5 uh, by Nakamura. That's the king's pawn opening by playing e4. Now knight to uh, f3 by Anand and Nakamura develops the knight on c6. Bishop comes out on c4 uh, and here bishop c5 uh, by Nakamura as well. Now here Anand castles instead of going for d3. That's one way of playing but Anand here tried to just put his king on safety first by castling. Uh, and Nakamura develops the knight on f6. Anand plays uh, pawn to d3. And now pawn to d6 by Nakamura. All standard moves, both playing solid. No one is going for a flashy opening. Both of them are following the basics of the game and just making sure the position is strong and solid in the opening. Here, uh, now first move where Anand starts to go for the center maybe by playing c3 and then he's probably looking forward to playing a d4 sometime and break open the center. Uh, here Nakamura plays a6 just making sure that the bishop is never trying to pin the knight. Uh, and then a4 by Anand. Now this is typical of Anand. Uh, if you have just seen a lot of his games, you notice that generally he castles on the king side and then starts ahead with a good attack on the queen side, trying to take advantage from there and then win the game eventually. Now, in this game, it looks like he's going to do something similar. So, yeah, let's proceed with the game. Now, Nakamura castles, uh, which is the right move as well. And now, uh, h3 by uh, Anand here, just trying to prevent bishop on g4, which can be annoying because then your knight is pinned. And if you are trying to really move your queen out of the way, then you might even spoil your pawn structure and make your king wide open. So, just to avoid that, uh, Anand plays h3. And then bishop goes back on a7. Uh, that's what Nakamura chooses. Just trying to make sure that he can even just move his maneuver his knight, attacking the bishop maybe, and then uh, play pawns forward too. Just trying to clear up the path, taking his bishop backwards. It can also mean that he can play b5 sometime very soon. Here knight comes out on d2, just trying to improvise the position of the knight, trying to develop it. Of course, uh, a3 would have been very passive because bishop is already occupying uh, the c4 and the knight cannot go even on uh, b5. So there's no point of taking the knight over there. Yes, it can come back on c, but rather get up the knight in such a way that you are you're both the knights are connected and that can be helpful as well. Here, h6 uh, by Nakamura. Probably a waiting move because not even bishop was trying to come here since it's blocked with the knight. And here, uh, Anand centralizes the rook on e1, a standard move uh, in a lot of his games, uh, just try to get a rook on the e-file. Uh, here, knight goes back on e7, just making sure uh, that he can now push pawns forward from the queen side. Uh, can be one step, can be two step. Uh, and that's why uh, it clearly shows that he got his bishop backwards and then the knight out of the way, just to, in order to play pawns forward on the queen side. Now here, uh, Anand goes back with bishop on b3 so that even he can push his pawns and just in case uh, c5 is played, that can be meet up with c4, just closing the situation here. 
Now uh, Nakamura understands that and gets his knight on the king side by placing the knight on g6. Maybe his ideas are to, uh, in the long run, exchange the knights or maybe just try and acquire uh, the f4, which can be a good square. Uh, eventually getting his queen over uh, to g5 and then trying to go for a uh, sneaky checkmate on g2. So here Anand uh, straight away goes for the center now. There's no point waiting further and plays d4, asking for pawn exchange if Nakamura really wants to, which he denies and just gets his rook active on e8. The right choice, of, of course, because just want to get rooks in front of each other. Queens haven't been developed for both the sides. Um, so both of them are probably playing a bit passive, uh, just trying to hold on to the position so that uh, the the one who attacks maybe pen gets penalized at the end. Now, bishop to uh, c2 by Anand, making sure that if some pawn break happens, uh, the knight is being attacked. And once you take on the knight, uh, the pawn structure of black gets spoiled. That's what you can always look forward to, uh, spoiling your open pawn structure and taking advantage of the game from there on. Here, uh, Nakamura develops the light square bishop finally on d7. Uh, his ideas of just get maybe getting the bishop active on c6 eventually and eyeing the king's diagonal. That can be one way. Uh, he could have done by playing pawn forward as well, going for some pawn exchange. Or maybe that's what his next plan is now to play pawn to b5. And if uh, Anand takes, he can take back with the bishop, getting the bishop active and attacking the f1 always. Uh, so knight goes back here by Anand, uh, trying to clear up the queen's path in front, getting his knight active. Maybe he's trying to connect, uh, get his uh, knight on g3 as well, uh, and then maybe even to f5. Uh, that can be one of the plans. And here, pawn to c5 finally, for which uh, Nakamura had got his bishop back, his knight out of the way. Uh, he plays finally uh, c5, trying to attack from the queen's side. And here Anand takes on the pawn uh, on C file rather than taking on E. Now he can take on the E file as per the computer is what's suggesting. But uh, he was pretty much clear he wanted uh, that to be taken with the pawn. Uh, and if he would have taken the pawn on E file, that can be taken back with the knight. And then knight exchange can also happen and rook gets active too. So he didn't want that to happen. So he rather took uh, the C pawn, which gets taken back uh, with the pawn on D file. Uh, making sure that the there's some uh, the queen uh, queens are probably in front of each other once the bishop is moved out of the way, uh, so that was a nice way uh, by Anand to uh, capture the correct pawn over there. Um, not going with the best computer line, but yes, that makes a lot of sense. Now knight uh, to e3, uh, just trying to get his knight active again because f1 was definitely not the square. For the knight now knight can go on to a couple of squares here and both look okay for the knight maybe even to uh, c4 that can also be a nice square uh, so just improvising the position improving the position of your pieces that's how you should always go about in chess and now b5 by nakamura again trying to expand all the pawns of the king side uh, queen side sorry uh, so that he can just gain some space uh, over here and attack on the queen side and then eventually uh, win the game now here, Anand takes the pawn uh, on b5. And now uh, Nakamura takes back with the a pawn, just making sure that the rooks are now in front of each other. It's an open file. Just the bishop is in, is in between, which can be just negotiated in the next move. And then rook exchange is always possible. Uh, here, Anand plays uh, c4. Now, it looks like a normal move, but there's a lot of uh, concept behind it because now the pawn cannot on c5 cannot be moved. Uh, you should always be careful about the discoveries. Now, for example, Anand plays something else here. The C pawn can also get moved up uh, and the ideas can be of attacking the knight as well. Maybe looking forward to uh, exchanging the bad bishop for the knight because uh, the bishop is actually just in between the rook, uh, rooks and the rooks cannot be exchanged for now. Uh, it's a nice diagonal uh, for the bishop though and you might even want to keep your pieces active. But exchanging would not be a bad option. And if you would have uh, proceeded like this, that could have been a problem here. And that then game also goes more in the favor of uh, black here. If you see the engine evaluation, if the pawn is played forward, simply because the bishop is eyeing the knight. Now, uh, let's go back to the game where Anand, where, uh, Anand plays c4 instead, making sure that there's no capture uh, or there's no pawn advance happening. And now here... Uh, 
Nakamura plays bishop on c6, trying to exchange queens of the board. And uh, Anand takes on the pawn uh, first, just making sure that uh, he doesn't lose out on a pawn or spoil his uh, pawn structure there further. Now, bishop takes back the pawn and now Anand takes on the queen as well, which gets taken back by the rook. Now, uh, the position is equal, sort of, just slight advantage in favor of white. Uh, and that's more because the knights are more centralized, I would say. And uh, the bishop pair is also in a better position as compared to what Nakamura has. So is the case for the knight. Both are sitting uh, on the king side though. But yes, the other knight by, uh, of Anand, which is on e3, controls a good square, which is d5. And here, that's what Anand does. Uh, does sorry, uh, goes with knight on d5. Uh, Nakamura takes back the knight and now pawn exchange happens. Now, you can get greedy here by just playing rook captures on pawn, but that would be a bad move because, simply because bishop comes on e4 and that just makes sure that one of the rooks will be gone out of the game. So, just before playing such moves, you can be uh, a bit more thoughtful. Doesn't Don't take free uh, pawns which look like free because they can uh, cost you much in the game. Uh, here, uh, pawn forward to c4 uh, by uh, Nakamura, just activating the bishop further. Uh, and now bishop to d2 uh, by Anand. Now, uh, the bishop comes on d4, the right choice, because now you're attacking a pawn, your rooks can be exchanged as well. And that's what happens, uh, rooks gets exchanged on the board. And here, Anand takes on the knight as well, just making sure that the pawn structure is spoiled. Uh, and that's what he can look forward to taking advantage in the end game. And now bishop comes on c3, trying to exchange the bishops as well, so that there's clear-cut advantage for Anand. Now rook comes on the d-file just to attack the pawn and grab it because it's not safe anymore. And here uh, Anand takes another pawn uh, on e-file. Now, if you see properly, he just tried and takes uh, pawns out of the game just trying to grab onto extra pawns, which would leave him in the end game with uh, a very good problem to have because then he'll have multiple pawns on both the sides of the board and then he can actually attack and just simply win the end game comfortably. Now, and, uh, Nakamura takes back the pawn, uh, the knight with the bishop and uh, Anand also takes back uh, with the rook, just getting his rook active. Now, um, Nakamura offers rook exchange which Anand again denies because he just wants to make sure that he gets double center pawns if Anand, if now Nakamura takes back. So Nakamura doesn't take, but just advances the pawn. And uh, yes, you can take on the pawn here and then uh, the opponent can take back and you can take back the bishop. Uh, and this trade can happen in the game uh, where you will have bishop and you will have two pawns, which can be very much effective against the other two pawns on the G file, which are double pawns as well. And you have center pawn that can be advantageous. You just need to get your king in the center and then take it on from there. But instead in the game, uh, Nakamura, uh, after advances the pawn, Anand takes on the rook first, just making sure that there's no chance of uh, Nakamura getting back into the game with the rook uh, hanging around. And then bishop goes back on e8. Uh, and Na um, Anand takes back the pawn uh, and uh, Nakamura takes back. Now, just playing a g4 once so that the pawns cannot move forward. Of course, the, both the pawns are in the same file. So g4 stops both of them. The only concern here can be the weak h3, which is on a light square. And that's what Nakamura can look forward to as his last hopes that he can if take, take the bishop uh, to somewhere on f2 or on g2, uh, f1 or g2. He can take on the, uh, the weak pawn there and then try to win it from there. That's the only hope that uh, Nakamura has because otherwise the spawn on uh, d5 is very strong and that can be a comfortable win from here. And that's what happens eventually in the game. Uh, both the kings approach the center, that's the standard practice, go towards the center and take space, take the opposition. And here king goes to e3. Now bishop comes back, just trying to sneak his way uh, back to somehow on g2. Anand goes in the center, just disregarding that fact because that even that pawn, if goes away, doesn't cost him much. 
Here Aaron takes a pawn and bishop goes, and now uh, king to e7, which was uh, an, an act, a blunder by uh, Nakamura. Yes, Nakamura can go back here, but that also doesn't help because once king starts going forward, uh, there's no way that this pawn can be stopped uh, from queening. And yes, you can gain some space or you can even push the pawns forward and win the end game comfortably. But instead, in the end, uh, what happens in the game is uh, Nakamura plays uh, king to e7, just trying to cut loose of this pawn so that he can take control of uh, d6 or maybe even d7, just make sure that the pawn is not advanced. Uh, here, uh, Aaron takes on the pawn first on g7, and now he comes back on uh, bishop g2 by Nakamura, trying to take on the pawn. And now he Aaron advances the pawn on h4. The idea is after the pawn is captured, he can come back on e5 and defend the h2 so that there's no way that the pawn will be queening up. So now uh, and Nakamura plays uh, bishop on f3, attacking the pawn, which is simply saved by placing it uh, one step further on g5. King to f7 by, uh, and, uh, by Nakamura there. And now Anand starts with the other pawn on b5, which is, comes to b4. And now uh, king to g6 uh, by uh, uh, by Nakamura and Anand plays pawn forward. Doesn't bother what is happening on the other side. You can, yes, you can take the pawn, doesn't matter. You can just proceed as well. But it would be too late to control the pawn there. You can even lose your bishop if you really want to and just get queen. But grandmasters won't leave their pieces like that. Just save them with the knight and then uh, nothing is stopping this. And queen comes on the board. That's mate in eight. And of course, uh, Anand would find it. So this was an interesting game. Uh, I'm sorry, Nakamura, I'm placing your loss on your birthday. But yeah, but yeah I'm a true Indian fan uh, of Vishyanan, so I can't let this be uh, even your win on your birthday occasion. So sorry for that. But yeah, I love playing again and watching you uh, uh, chess on chess.com. Uh, I like your live streaming as well. And someday I'll try to um, play with you as well if I get a chance. So let's see if that works out in the future. Maybe you like the video once I place it on YouTube. So yeah, uh, thanks everyone for watching this. Uh, I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And see you tomorrow again with one of the finest games by Vishy Anand of all the time. Um, thank you so much for your time. Take care, bye-bye.